What's up ladies and lads? I am Keep Style Lady or KS Lady for short and in this video I'm going to show you how to create this bucket hat, the froggy bucket hat for our pets. So this is actually a partner for the very first tutorial video that I made. It is a froggy bucket hat for myself and it's nowhere to be found apparently. So just somewhere in my screen I'm gonna show you the picture and if you want to go if you want to create it so you can go matchy matchy with your fur baby then the link is on the description box. So I made this for my dog Conan, which is absolutely the best dog in the world, on our giveable. But the dog a while ago on the montage, it wasn't him. It was very because Conan that day wasn't available. You know, hectic schedule and all. Being the best dog in the world is very tiring, so I understand. But if you notice that this is slightly bigger than Barry, and that is true because Barry is in small size while Conan is on medium, which is where I based it from. So it doesn't really fit perfectly, but don't worry, in this video, I'm going to show you the patterns for small, medium, and large. Although, I'm going to focus on the medium, but the patterns for small and large will also be presented, and I will further explain that later. But it is also important to know that this pattern is stitch count dependent. So make sure that if you're following the same pattern as I am, or if you're following me religiously, then make sure that you have the same number of stitches. And lastly, before we start, I would just like to promote my shop. It is also called Keep Styling Lady. Check my Instagram, my Facebook, and my TikTok account. And there you will see more of my projects and other fashion-related stuff that I'm just so excited to share with you guys. And of course, if you're gonna recreate this froggy bucket hat for our pets, then just tag me on your Instagram stories, posts, or TikToks, my days, or whatever, so I can interact with it and repost it. And I think that's all. So let's now start to the tutorial. Let's start with the materials. I use approximately 65 grams of green yarn and 10 grams of white and black yarn. For reference, I use 5 ply milk cotton yarns, but you are free to choose whichever yarn you prefer. Though I recommend using cotton yarns so it will be more comfortable for our pets. Next, we have tape measure, which is optional, a darning needle, 4.0mm hook, and a pair of scissors. We're going to begin our project by creating a magic circle. To do a magic circle, take your yarn and wrap it around your two fingers two times. You should have an X or a cross on the side facing you. Turn, then take your crochet hook and insert it on the first bar and then hook on the second bar then pull through. It will twist and create a loop. Next, yarn over to the first bar again then pull through. After that, Release the yarn from your two fingers and now you have created a magic circle. To start row number one, we're going to do eight single crochet. To do a single crochet, insert your hook on the magic circle, yarn over, then pull through. With two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through on those two loops at the same time. And that is SC number one. Again, we're going to place 8 single crochet on our magic circle. Now 
Once you finish, take the tail end and pull it so it will close the matching circle tight. Now, we're going to slip stitch. We're going to slip stitch on the first stitch that we made. Insert your hook there, yarn over, pull through and pull through once again. And that is how we close a row. After slip stitching, we're gonna start row 2 with chain 2. Then on that same stitch, we're going to place one double crochet. So to do a double crochet, yarn over and then insert your hook and then yarn over again and pull through. With the three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through on the first two loops and then yarn over and pull through on the remaining two. So in this row, we're going to do an increase. We're going to place two double crochet on every stitch. So by the end of the row, we're going to have 16 stitches in total. Remember that the chain 2 already counts as a double crochet and it is included in our stitch count. Hence, we put one double crochet on that same stitch a while ago to make it 2. Now, for the rest of the row, keep putting two double crochet on niche stitches and I will meet you at the end. Once you've reached the end, slip stitch on the second chain from the previous two chain, and that concludes row number two. To start row three, chain two. For this row, we're going to do another increase. This time, alternating one double crochet and two double crochet all the way around. Since chain two already counts as one double crochet, so on the next stitch, we're going to place two double crochet. So just keep alternating until the end of the row. Reminder that you should make sure that you will not commit any mistake in the increase for this row because you can use this as a good reference for succeeding rows. I will further discuss that later. Once you've reached the end of the row, slip stitch on the second chain from the previous two chain. To start row 4, like usual, chain 2. On this row, we're going to double crochet 2 times, then put 2 double crochet on the third stitch. Don't forget that the chain 2 already counts as 1 double crochet. Now, as mentioned a while ago, when you did the right increase from row 3, you can observe that for every row, we are going to increase on the same increased stitch of the previous row. That means, on your increased stitch from row 3, that is also where you're going to put your increased stitch in row 4. And this is also applicable for the upcoming rows. Keep repeating the increase pattern and I will meet you at the end of the row. To end row 4, just like the first rows, slip stitch on the second chain from the previous two chain. Another important reminder is if you're making a small size, then you can stop at row number 4 and proceed to the ear holes part. After slip stitching, Let's start row number 5 and chain 2. For this row, we are going to do 3 double crochet and put the increase on the 4th stitch. Again, you can use the increase stitch from the previous row as a guide on where you are going to put your increase. And always remember that your first stitch is the same stitch where the chain 2 is placed. Hence, why we consider chain 2 as our first double crochet. So just keep increasing until the end of the row, then slip stitch on the second chain from the previous two chain. I will meet you at row number 6.
So, this was the time when I checked if 5 rows already fit Conan, but turns out I still need another row for it. And I am afraid to read what's in Conan's mind because the way he looks at me is like he's so fed up and it is a moment away in leaving the house and starting a new life in Canada. But anyways, at this point, keep checking if it's already enough for your pet before adding another row. We don't want it too small or too big because it might be uncomfortable for them. Assuming he looks very comfortable now. <laughs> Let's now move on to the last row of our top hat. For row 6, as usual, chain 2. We're going to DC times 4, then 2 DC on the 5th stitch, all the way around. By the end of this, if you're doing the same size as mine, then your final stitch count should be 48 stitches. However, if you're making a large size, then you can proceed in doing another 2 rows or more. Just follow the uniform increase pattern, which is basically, as we move on to another row, we will put one more double crochet before the increase. In short, for the large size, row 7 goes chain 2, DC times 5, then increase on the 6th, and then slip stitch. For row number 8, chain 2, DC times 6, then increase on the 7th stitch, then slip stitch. And the same thing goes for the next rows. To end row 6, just like the previous rows, slip stitch on the second chain from the previous two chain. And that concludes our top hat. Let's now proceed to the ear holes and the string. Now for the ear holes. To start row 7 of the medium size, chain 2. Now for this part, the pattern may differ depending on the size you're making. I'm making a medium, so if you're making a small or a large, then check this pattern on the screen. Take a screenshot or a picture and use it as a reference while I'm making the medium pattern. Take note for those doing the large size, you can chain 28 up to 32 depending on what suits your preference, but on the pattern, I decided to go with chain 30. So let's continue. After chaining 2, we're going to double crochet 8 times with the chain 2 counting as double crochet number 1. After that, we're going to chain 16. Next, skip 8 stitches, then connect the chains by putting double crochet on the next 16 stitches after the skip. So basically on the 9th stitch and so on. Make sure that when you connect the chains, it is on the right side. Now, for the other ear hole, we're going to chain 16 again. Then, we skip 8 stitches and we will connect it on the stitches after the skip until we reach the end of the row. Once we reach the end of the row, we will slip stitch on the second chain from the previous two chain like usual. Let's now proceed to row 8 by chaining 1. Again, the pattern will be different for each size because there's a difference in the number of stitches. Use the provided pattern for small and large as a reference. Reminder that you can adjust the length of the string by adding more chains until it fits your pet perfectly. The choice is up to you. 
Focusing on the medium size, we're going to put single crochet on the first 16 stitches with the first stitch placed on the same stitch of the slip stitch. Oh my god, take a shot every time I say stitch. Once you've reached the chain part, make sure that you're crocheting on the right side of the chain or where the V-shape is more prominent and I know I'm very sorry for the view. After the 16 stitches, chain 46. This is the length of your string, but you are free to add or lessen it depending on what you prefer. After chaining 46, slip stitch on the second stitch from the hook and all the way across until you reach the end of the chain. Once you're at the end, single crochet 32 times until you reach the middle of the other previous chain 16. Once you reach the middle, chain 46 just like the other string. And then slip stitch on the second chain from the hook all the way across. After finishing the second strings, single crochet 16 times or basically until you reach the end of the row. To end row 8, slip stitch on the previous one chain and that includes the ear holes and the strings. Now it's time for the frilly part. For row 9, start again with chain 2. We're going to do one increase by putting 2 double crochet on every stitch. With the chain 2 already counting as 1 double crochet, let's put another one on the same stitch. Then just keep increasing until the end of the row. Once you've reached the string part, what I advise is to sandwich it with a pair of double crochet. But I feel like it's better if you just watch what I'm doing. So basically, on that stitch, I still place two double crochet with the strings in between them. Once you've reached the end of the row, slip stitch on the second chain from the previous two chain.
To start row 10, chain 2. We're going to do another increase by alternating 1 double crochet and 2 double crochet. Remember that the chain 2 already counts as a double crochet, so we're proceeding with an increase. Just alternate 1 DC and 2 DC until the end of the row, then slip stitch on the second chain from the previous 2 chain. For the last row of the freely, we're going to start it with chain 2 as usual. Then for this row, we're not going to do one increase. We're just going to place one double crochet all the way around and then once you finish, slip stitch on the second chain from the previous two chain just like from the previous rows. And then cut off your yarn. However, if you feel like the frills are not long enough or like you want to extend it more and make it more wavy, then for row 11, you can do another increase row. Following the uniform increase pattern, just DC times 2, then increase on the third stitch, so on and so forth. Then do another row of the no increase after that. So now, Let's attach the white yarn. There are many ways of attaching a new yarn or switching colors, but this is how I prefer doing it. So take your white yarn and then select any stitch that you'd like to start from. Insert your hook on the stitch that you've chosen, then yarn over your white yarn, then pull it all the way through. So what I do is that I tie the new collar on the stitch so it will be secured. After tying, reinsert your hook on the same stitch then chain 1. For row number 12, place single crochet on the same stitch of the chain. Then just do single crochet all the way around. And then once you've reached the end of the row, slip stitch on the previous one chain. Then cut off your yarn. I will meet you once you're finished. Once you're done, weave the tail ends into the hat to secure it. So grab your darning needle and insert the yarn. A quick technique to insert the yarn is by folding it over the eye of the needle and holding it down tight. That will make the yarn compact and small enough to fit the needle. So to weave the tail ends, what I do is I just insert the needle to the past stitches, specifically on the white border and just work my way through it, making sure that I will end on the inside of the hat. So after tucking the needle in and out, I do a knot, tuck it in a few times again, and then I cut off the excess yarns. Finally, it's time to do the face of our throat key. Get your yarns and we're gonna start with the black. So first, let's do a slip knot. After that, chain 4. Then slip stitched on the 4th chain from the hook, or basically the first chain that you created. This should create a space at the center, and by the way, this is just an alternative method of doing a magic circle. So after slip stitching, for row number 1, we're going to place 6 single crochet in the center space. It's kinda hard to see it with black yarn, so try to listen carefully and follow the written pattern on the screen.
Personally, I think it is best to put a stitch marker on the first stitch so you will not get confused, but this is just optional. After doing 6 single crochet, slip stitch on the first stitch. So for row 2, it is an increased row so we're going to alternate 1 single crochet and 2 single crochet all the way around. So start by putting 1 single crochet on the same stitch of the slip stitch. Again, dark currents could be quite troublesome to work with so feel free to use a stitch marker when you need it. Proceed to the next stitch with 2 single crochet. Then just keep doing the pattern until the end of the row. So just keep alternating 1 SE and 2 SE. Then once you reach the end, slip stitch on the first stitch. I will meet you when you're done. Once you're done, cut off your yarn because you're done with the black color. Now let us start the third row by getting your white yarn. Again, to switch colors, select any stitch that you'd like to start from, then insert your hook there, and then yarn over your white yarn and pull it all the way through. Tie the new color on that stitch, then reinsert your hook. After that, chain 2. For row 3, we're going to do one increase by placing two half double crochet on every stitch. So to do HDC, yarn over, insert your hook on that stitch if it allows you. Apparently it does not. Uh, okay, there you go. Then yarn over and pull through. This will leave you with three loops on your hook. And then yarn over and pull through on those three loops at the same time. Put two HDC on every stitch. Remember to tuck in the black yarn tail ends as you go. I will meet you at the end of the row. Once you're done, slip stitch on the second chain from the previous two chain. Then pull the yarn until a good length, then cut off because we're finished with the white yarn. Let's now move on to the fourth row using the green yarn. Select any stitch where you want to start from, then insert your hook and yarn over. Pull all the way through and tie it for security. After that, reinsert your hook on the same stitch, then chain 1. For this row, we're going to do another increase, this time using single crochet. Like row 2, we're just going to alternate 1 SC and 2 SC all the way around. Don't forget to begin on the same stitch of the slip stitch. At the end of the row, slip stitch on the chain 1, then pull out your yarn at a good length, then cut off. I will meet you at the end.
Once you've cut the yarn, weave the excess on the green part of the eye. Then repeat the process and the pattern to make another one. Once you're done, now take your green yarn because we're doing the exact same pattern again but using only the green color. This is for the back side of the eye. Just go back to the step-by-step -step tutorial or you just can pause this part if you have no problem understanding the written pattern. It is important that you will leave a long tail end for the back eye because this will be the very same you're going to use to stitch the eyes together as well as onto the hat. Trust me on this one. Got yourself two pairs of the front and the back eye. Now we're going to attach it together. Insert your long tail and your darning needle, then place both eyes back to back. From the back, let your needle pass through both eyes. Then just continue stitching it back and forth and on every stitch that aligns. Once you finish, this is how it's supposed to look like. Take the other pair, then do the exact same thing on the other eye. Now, I know I made a mistake of not using the same tail end to attach it to the hat, so my bad. But what you can do instead is to insert another yarn to the needle, then create a knot at the end. Now, take your hat and find the slip stitch line. Make sure that you place it on the back. Once you've settled that, take the eyes, then decide on where you're going to place it. I attach it on the second stitch up to the fourth stitch. You can choose where you want to attach it, but remember that the distance will affect the face of our froggy. To begin, start from the inside then into the back. Then let the needle pass through the eyes and the hat. Then just sew it in back and forth. Make sure that you only thread on the green part of the eyes. Just continue going back and forth to make sure it's not gonna appear wonky. But if it still is, one way to further secure it is to insert your needle directly on the inside, then turn your hat inside out. From that, determine where the eye part is by filling the slight bulge, then hold on to it because we're also gonna thread there back and forth. But make sure that you only thread on the surface of it because sewing way too below will make the eyes look strained and stressed. And as if it has 5 vlogs for academic purposes, you want 20 days but it's still on her second vlog and it's vending out in her voiceover. Anyways, after threading, do some few knots then cut off your yarn. Do the same thing on the other eye. Then ta-da! We're finally done with the eyes. Now get your black yarn because we're about to do the last part and it's the mouth. I freehanded the mouth and you are also free to do so because there is a variety of designs that you can pick from. But if you want to follow mine, then first attach a black yarn to your needle then create a knot on the end. So try figuring out how you, how you want your smile to appear first. So I started on the third row and I inserted the needle from the back and then I created a straight vertical line on that row. Then next, I created a diagonal line for the next row covering two stitches.
One tip is to thread in between the yarns if you're connecting them so it will look more linked and joint. After that, I created a straight horizontal line on the same row covering 4 stitches in total. Then, to make it proportional, I place a diagonal line on the same row covering 2 stitches, then a straight line or straight vertical line on the row above it. And I'm done with the mouth. So let's now try to weave it. Thread into the inside of the bucket hat, insert your yarn into some of the past stitches, and constantly check if it shows on the front side. Do some few knots, then after securing it, cut your tie off. And ladies and lads, get off your fit and start dancing because you're officially done with the froggy bucket hat. And we're done. I really hope that you like your froggy bucket hat for our pets. And I really hope that they love it as well because I absolutely love mine. It looks so cute. And for those who are asking, I don't know if anyone is actually asking, but I didn't add blush on this pattern because I feel like it will just make the face look a bit too cramped. But for those who made a larger size or small, whatever, really, you can just add one if you want to. You have the freedom to do whatever you want. And if you want to add, then a blush tutorial is available on the first bucket hat tutorial that I made. So just check it out there if you want to. But then if you don't, and it's absolutely fine. I feel like I'm repeating myself too much. Again, please follow my shop. It is also called Keep Smiling Lady. Check my Facebook, my Instagram, and my TikTok. So please support my shop. It is a fashion-related business. And I'm gonna post, I'm gonna keep trying to post quality contents, quality projects, and possibly quality memes. I don't know. I feel like I have a lot of fashion-related memes that I want to share. Hopefully not. And lastly, if you have any more suggestions of what should I do next or any crochet tutorials that you would like to learn, then please just comment them down below and I will try to make a video out of it. And that is all everyone. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on my next videos. Bye-bye! Before we end, I would just like to give credits where credits is due. A big shout out to Crochet It because it is her pattern that gave me an idea on how I want my doggy froggy hat to look like. So make sure to check her YouTube channel and subscribe and support her. Bye.